come up with um, questions that that I may not come up with. Right. So um, so we'll see. So I'm going live now, and uh, we'll see what up here now. Let's. All right. Do you have any questions before we get started, though, as far as the recording part for for us? Um. No, I think I should be good. And if we got to figure this out while we're uh, live streaming, everyone likes to see the uh, the, the sausage, sausage being made. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. Now, I got to make sure I'm actually live. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay. Um. Do you uh? Did you find us on YouTube? Okay, we we got it. Okay, so I'm gonna ask my YouTubers or no, they're not YouTubers. My YouTube audience, if they can also hear my guest. Guest, would you say a few words? Sure. Hello, everybody. That's my name it. is Brian. Very good. That was like several words. That's excellent. There we go. I want to make sure that people at home can actually hear you. So please, uh, will someone comment and tell me that you heard my guest so we can get the show on the road? Uh, we've got Tan Nguyen. Hello, Tan. Thanks for joining. Uh, hi, Joanne or John or Joanne. John sometimes being joy. We can hear him. Yay. All right. Here we go, guys. So awesome. So, um, you can hear him faintly. GR, though, you're always having problems, GR. So I, I oops. No, that's him. I can try to turn up my mic. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, no, you're you're good. Everyone else hears you. So I am going to start this. Sure. And um, all right, here we go. So f just for the people who are watching from home. If you should have a question, go ahead and type it in chats and, and I can ask my guest. I think this might make our podcast even better because I don't, maybe you guys have a question that I can't think of. So here we go. We're going to start recording. Stand by. My guest today is 22-year-old Brian, younger than any guest I've ever had on. But I'm having him on the show because he's going to be talking about some things that really no one else so far has been willing to talk about. Uh, I'm also seeing that a lot of like more younger people are more open about being in the lifestyle, about their kinks, and more willing to share. So, Brian, uh, welcome to the show. Let's tell people about you. You're 22 years old. He's a U.S. Marine, people. Mm. And Rock. he's, yeah, and he's got some kinks that... You would probably say, really? A Marine <laughs> with these kinks? Oh, yeah. So I'm going to name off some of them. And uh, and Brian's going to help me clarify. So cuckolding, most of us know what that is by now. CBT, or ball busting. Femdom, he's into feet. He's into to chastity. Uh, interracial race play. I didn't know that was a thing, but apparently it is. SPH, small penis humiliation, BDSM, most people know that, and then edging or orgasm control. I don't know if we're going to be able to get to all of them, but I can't wait to, to try. Uh, Brian, first of all, what is CBT? I mean, ball busting I've kind of heard, but what is CBT? What does that stand for? CBT stands for cock and ball torture. Oh, Okay. Ball it's busting. a little rough on the oh, ears, it, it, I know. That's why. I... It is. Well, and not just on the ears, apparently. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so apparently it's a thing. It's a kink. You're into it? Absolutely, yes. Explain what it actually is, because it sounds awful. It does, yeah. Um, so basically, it could be, there's a lot of different tiers to how... Uh, rough you could get with it so something as simple as like you know light slaps or taps to you know your most sensitive areas would count and it can get as as extreme as you want it i suppose i like to think that i'm somewhere in the middle oh. uh, some people just like the idea of you know any kind of pain however light or as hard as it is to that area and they don't actually go through with it uh, or do it but basically, it just encompasses any kind of uh, pressure, let's say, applied to that area. 
Okay. How did you find out that you were into this? What happened? That's a good question, actually. Um, I think I think I already liked the idea of it. I think I would consider myself a masochist, uh, at least in this context. And I didn't realize that there even was a community of people who were into this kink uh, until I saw that people on the internet were talking about it. And at first I was like, man, that is that has got to be the most horrible thing I've ever heard of in my entire life. I could not wrap my head around it, but, uh, you know, with a little bit more exposure to it, I realized that, you know, maybe that wouldn't be so bad. Nothing too extreme, at least for me, obviously everyone has their own personal preferences, but for me, I thought, okay, maybe this is something I could try like a little bit. I mean, some girls like being choked and some people like getting, you know, bitten and it's not like you're drawing blood or you're really actually intentionally trying to hurt or harm this person. But it's like the idea of doing something that is normally, you know, would be an aggressive act. It kind of has like the synapses in your brain start to fire off. Okay. Um, but, you know, you sound very mature for a 22-year-old, not to put down every other 22-year-old, but you sound very mature and you sound like you've, like this is it, you're like, you're not such, you're not just some weirdo in the basement that there's like some thought and have, do you feel like you've done kind of, um, I don't know if soul searching is actually the word, but done enough research and looking upon, looking inward to see that that is that this is something that um, is normal, and I'm doing air quotations because I'm sure a lot of people listening are thinking this is not normal. But right, of course. So you looked into it, yeah? I definitely have, yeah. I mean, I still have a lot more to learn, and you know, things change over time. Of course, I think a lot of the people who are into this are older for primarily because they've been in relationships for longer. Um, a lot of these kinks are built on trust in a relationship. And most people my age, they haven't been in a relationship long enough to develop that kind of a partnership with the person that they're with, um, which is a completely understandable. I mean, I'm definitely still young. And even anyone at any age, it takes a lot to be able to open up about something like this. And some people just aren't even into it in the first place. But I definitely... I definitely looked into it and made sure that this is something that I did like, um, and I do. Okay. Can you tell me if, was there any incident, like did you accidentally get hit or was a girlfriend aggressive or, or whatever that, that made you think like, oh, hey, that might be a turn on for me? Yeah, I think it's weird because I think it started not because of an attraction to the idea of it, but the complete opposite. It was... I don't know if a fear is the right word. Well, anyone with common sense would obviously be afraid of this happening to them. But um, I think it was the fact that it was something that I didn't like for such a long time. I just thought the idea of hurting someone there is such a horrible thing that I would do anything I possibly could to avoid it. And I just, when I would hear like a joke, let's say like in school or something like that, and someone would say, oh yeah, like you should whatever like if i see if i see like a girl saying if i see that guy i'm gonna kick him in the balls or something just hearing that to me i'd be like oh man i want to stay as far away from her as possible and i don't even want to think about that i wouldn't want to see it happen to anyone i wouldn't want to think about it happen to anyone and i wouldn't want anyone to try to do it to me but i think that i don't know if fear is the right word but well at some point that turned though right it did yeah i think someone it's Thankfully, it's never genuinely happened to me where someone was so angry at me that it resulted in that. But people have threatened it playfully, not not out of hate, but like kind of as a joke. And uh, in my in the back of my head, I remember someone said like, I think I was just teasing someone and messing with them, and they said like, if you do that again, then I'm gonna kick you in the balls or something like that. Oh. And like a little, tiny little part of me was like, hmm, like that's kind of. That's kind of hot. And I don't know why. I have no real idea why I thought that was attractive. And I didn't think much of it at the time. Wow. I recognize that there was a little part of me that was like, that's kind of the idea. That's kind of nice. Right. Well, you know, the more people I talk to, the more I realize sometimes there is no why. Like sometimes you can't explain why you like something or why it turns you on. 
you just know that it does, right? Right. It, it's kind of like when you have a preference for for something and someone asks you why, well, you can't explain it. it. You just do. Like, you know, why do some guys like girls with bigger breasts than others? They just do. There is no why. Um, so we're not going to try to find out why. Let's try to find out what. So did you... Um, is, You've been in a relationship for four years, which, by the way, at your age is a very long time. I'm assuming that your girlfriend, um, like, knows about these kinks. Is she into it as well? She definitely does know about it. Um, she She's into it, and she wasn't into it when I first met her, and I didn't find this relationship because of these kinks. Uh, but over time... I would tell her that I was interested in these things. And obviously, you know, naturally at first she was like, wow, are you, are you sure that this is something that you like? And, uh, I wasn't surprised that that was her reaction, but I was like, yeah, you know, I, I can't help it. It is what it is. I'm not saying that this is something that we have to participate in, but I think that you should know that I do have these preferences and these fantasies. And so she said, well, if it's something that you like, then, it's something that we should at least try, and if it works for the two of us, then it does. And, you know, she was – I'm very thankful that she was so open about it because uh, I was expected – you know, most people, that's going to be a pretty hard thing to grasp with your partner. That sure. they would want you to hurt them or, right. you know, humiliate them or do anything off-color or mean to them. But I explained it to her. You know, I, I let her know that it wasn't – I, it wasn't that I wanted her to hate me. It was, if anything, it'd be her showing love to me and showing how dedicated she is to me that she would be willing to explore these things. And if she didn't like it, then we wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't force her to do anything that she wouldn't want to do. And she likes it because she did it with me, and she realized that there is kind of a power play that you get. You get to right. have, like, power and dominance over another person and she didn't realize that that was something that she liked until she did it with me so that was pretty interesting wow like i found two young people who sound both sound very mature and uh very caring uh, at, at at such a young age and exploring things that i know even you know 40 50 year olds are kind of uncomfortable with uh, I'm, I'm sure there are men grappling with this god that turns me on but is like, am I normal? Um, and once you stop trying to figure out if you're normal, right, then you're right. able to explore the things that, that actually bring you joy. Um, and it clearly isn't for everybody. So can you tell me, like, some of the things that you guys do that kind of, you know, fulfills this kink that you have? Like, what does sure. she do? Does she, does she smack you a little bit? Down there. It definitely is a little bit of that. It it ties into a lot of the other kinks. I think it's like a good topping. It's like a nice flavor. It's the cherry on top of the ice cream sundae that is all of these other kinks together. So, you know, if I was in chastity and she was talking to me about her being with someone that wasn't me and teasing me about the idea that she could find someone who's better than me or more well endowed or whatever, then while she does that, she could be giving me some taps down there, let's mm. say, just as a, just to add to the humiliation aspect. Right. Like, like the spice, like you just putting salt right. on it. Exactly. Brian, you better watch your sodium intake. Um, <laughs> Okay. I, you know, the thing is, I'm, I, I get it because I've talked to so many people who kind of tell me the same thing, that it's, it's just something that, that turns them on. And wow, you found a partner who's willing to explore it with you. So, okay, we've kind of covered uh, ball busting. Um, I, I can tell that the, the kind of bigger umbrella is the cuckolding, right? Absolutely, yeah. Um, again, when did you realize that that that's a thing for you for that specifically uh that would probably have been my last relationship or i guess it wasn't technically my last relationship it was one of the relationships that i had it was a pretty short relationship it didn't end up working out for mutual reasons but uh we took in that relationship we took a break and we said that we would try doing 
an open relationship kind of deal. So I guess a break isn't the right word, but we tried out an open relationship. We both agreed on it. It was open for her side and it was open for my side. I was too busy to really do anything with anyone else. And that didn't bother me because I had my own stuff to worry about, but I was aware that she was doing things with other people and there wasn't a cuckold context to it. It was just, we're allowed to be with other people if we want to, nothing really romantic, just physical stuff. And I realized that I liked the idea. I really got turned on by the idea of her being with someone else. And I wanted to just keep asking about what it was like and what they did and if they did anything that her and I hadn't done together. And just the idea of, of sharing right. you know, my partner was something that was really attractive to me. Yeah. Um, and not to be stereotypical of Marines, but... Uh, can I ask you kind of what your personality is like outside of the bedroom? Are you are you pretty, you know, I don't know what term you want to use, but are, are you more alpha? Like no one would, you know, you know what I'm trying to ask you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I would say that if you were talking to me at work or even just even when I was a civilian before I enlisted, you would not have at all thought that this is something that I would have been interested in. Um, I'll make jokes that could maybe hint at it with the right people, mm -hmm. but just the average person and especially all the people that I work with, there's absolutely no way that they right. would know that I'm into this. Right. Okay. Uh, we do have a question from someone on YouTube uh, asking, what's your chastity schedule? Is it just a once in a while or something that that is more daily or, or weekly driven? It used to be a lot more often than it is now. Uh, I'm not in the States anymore because I'm on deployment, oh. so it's a little bit harder to manage that um, overseas, uh -huh. and it's a little bit harder for me to conceal uh, the chastity because of the clothes that I'll have to wear for when we do PT, for example. The shorts are pretty short, and they're pretty tight, and that clinking, clanking of the little lock on it would be a little tough to conceal. I know I could use right. tape, but sometimes the stuff that we do is pretty physically demanding, so mm -hmm. it'd, be a li it'd be pretty hard for me to, to do that. Uh, so unfortunately, I'm not able to do it as much now as I used to, but when I was a civilian and when I was stationed in California still so I could go home, uh, it was pretty much a daily thing where mm -hmm. at for showers or for sometimes for sleeping or when her and I would be intimate together, I would allow I would be allowed to be unlocked. And then sometimes we'd take a week long break where I would not be submissive in the relationship anymore. I would be kind of switch over and I would be dominant. OK. Wow. Um, so you're also into femdom, which I can uh, like we can already see how that that fits. Right. Um, right. You have a thing for feet, too. Absolutely, yeah. And well, I think that uh, that also ties into the femdom female stuff. domination. Right, right. Yeah, and the humiliation aspect of it. Um, kind of the idea that that's a part of the body that most people would just skip over and they'd go right for the goods, right for the meat and the potatoes. But if you were to be locked in chastity and your partner was to be sleeping with someone else and the only thing that you could see or that you could be used for your physical pleasure was the feet, mm. then that adds into like, you're not good enough for this. Someone else gets this and all you get is my feet. Wow. Brian, you're hardcore, man. You're oh, like, yeah. yeah, okay. So what do you do with the feet? Um, pretty much anything. It could be something as simple as just, you know, massaging them. Um, you know, I, I'll, I'll give my girlfriend massages usually, uh, just over her body, just to like pamper her, clean her up and, and help her with, with a, whatever it is that she needs if she wants to put lotion on or something. And I like the, I like the feedback that I get of seeing that she's happy, even if it's not necessarily sexual, just, you know, any kind of physical pleasure. Just it feels good to get a massage. It feels good to be clean and to be, you know, lotioned up or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then that applies to the feet as well. But if we're doing things in in the bedroom, in an intimate context, then I just, I kiss them, I massage them, I can, you know, lick them and um, she can use her feet to tease me by like, you know, giving me light kicks in that area oh. uh, or just, you know, putting her feet on my face and stuff like that. Mm. Okay. Have you ever been like actually hurt? I mean, like, like, oh, that wasn't good. Hurt. 
<laughs> yeah, I have. It was an accident. It was one st- stomp. I was laying down on my back, and then she she gave a kick that was a little. It just hit the right spot, the right angle, and it was the right amount of force to do a little bit of damage. She was a little bit more scared than I was. I mean, I was in pain, but at the same time, there was still that part of my mind, the little inner masochist in me that was like, you know, I kind of, I, I like that. I like the idea of it. And the pain pleasure response was, was nice. It was still painful enough to the point where I was obviously having like a physical response. I was like, okay, hold on a second. I got to <laughs> get my bearing back here. But and she was really worried for me. She's like, oh, my gosh, are you hurt? We got to take you to the hospital. I was like, no, no, I'm fine. <laughs> Boy, how do you explain that one? Well, doctor. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, do you, um, do you, is it kind of, do you build tolerance then? Because I've talked to other people who are really into the BDSM stuff. And, you know, it went from a few lashings, you know, the flogging, but then becomes like leaving marks. And so... Have have you had like progress in the pain tolerance or anything? Absolutely. I think it's similar to like spice in your food or like working out in the gym. You know, the first time you ever run three miles in your life is pretty tough. But if you run three miles often, then three miles is not so much. You can run five miles and then five miles becomes nothing. And you can run faster than that. Or the first time you ever have hot sauce. You could be like, oh, man, that's actually pretty spicy. But then, you know, you eat those Korean spicy noodles and then you keep eating those every week. And eventually, you know, you're eating whatever you want to. and It's not even a problem. Right. And so I'd say it's just like that. You know, you build your spice tolerance, you build your any kind of mental or physical tolerance. It it applies just like that. Right. But is is there also the okay? so like I love spicy food. But then sometimes when I get together with my other friends who also like spicy food, it becomes like a contest where you become, you're actually really proud that you're able to eat the spiciest pepper. Do you ever, do you have that? Do you have that, that, mm, I, I can really take it? I absolutely do. There's, there's that part of me, whether people see that or not, I still like knowing just for myself that I can do it. Whenever I go out and I eat food with my friends, I will always have the spiciest dish there. And if someone else thinks that they're going to eat food spicier than me, I'll be like, all right, pass the hot sauce. Cause I'll show you what's spicy. Right. And it's kind of the same thing with, with the kinks is I don't in person and especially at work, I don't really talk about that kind of stuff with anyone, but there's still the part inside of me that knows like, I can do this and you wouldn't be able to. So that kind of makes me feel feel good. Like, yeah, I'm I'm able to go through with that and not only survive it, but like I can actually enjoy it and have a good time. Right. So like like if you and I were captured and they were gonna start kicking us in the balls, I'd actually get turned on. You would be exactly, hurt. Yeah. Okay, yeah, exactly. I get it. I have higher survivability. <laughs> it's, it's, it's for tactical reasons. Right. Okay. Wow, we're, we're just, look, we're just getting through these. We've talked about chastity. Let's talk about the interracial race play. Um, what, what, what ethnicity are you? Uh, I am mixed. I am half Asian, and then I'm also Latino, and I'm white. Oh, okay. Oh, that sounds like a very nice mix. And what is your girlfriend? Uh, she is half white and half Middle Eastern. Oh well, you guys are just like you're getting you're getting them all covered. Um, yeah, we're like the United Nations. <laughs> you are. Uh, so, what is this interracial race play thing? Like, explain explain why it's a kink for you. For me, it's mostly the contrasting skin color between dark skin and lighter skin. Uh-huh. Um, I just think that. As just literally just from an aesthetic standpoint, I think that that is pleasing to the eye. Um, I'm not exactly sure why that is, but I've always thought that one dark skin person and one light skin person, it doesn't matter who is, which one is which, I've always thought that that's pleasing to the eye. And if I'm seeing two people together, I just have a preference for one of them being darker and one of them being lighter. In this case, my girlfriend being quite light skinned, I would want a darker skinned man to be with her. And that kind of led me into the whole queen of spades thing where, you know, they would only be with, you know, um, with black, black gentlemen. Uh-huh. Yeah. 
Um, so I am assuming then you have participated in the whole, uh, you know, cuckolding thing where your girlfriend is with a, a, a black bull. Yeah, not Are, nothing where we've been together together in person, oh. all three of us. But uh, she's she's gone out and she's you know met some people outside, and then <clears throat> sorry, and then she shares the messages um, or pictures and stuff like that with me, and that stuff really excites me. Mm-hmm. Or the stories, right? Right. Exactly. Does she ever take video? No, no videos or anything like that yet. Mm-hmm. Um, she we haven't done too much in terms of that in person she's pretty picky when it comes to her guys Mm -hmm. she thinks if she's going to do this and it's going to have to be with someone that she thinks is worth it to do Mm -hmm. it for so there's been a lot of like flirting and there's been some physical stuff but no actual like penetration yet but if that when that does happen then there will definitely be videos and she would prefer for me to be there in person so Mm -hmm. i think she's she's waiting for me to get back home before we do that i see so you being out of the country, uh, being stationed overseas, do you think, I mean, does that, does that kind of make it, uh, I'm, I'm not even sure how to ask this, but the fact that you're into cuckolding, by way of your job, you must be overseas and away from your girlfriend, does it turn you on that you're that far and she can like, go out with whoever she wants? It actually does, yeah, uh, and and her knowing that she can do it, um, obviously it doesn't happen that often because it's ultimately up to her who she wants to do it with and when she wants to do it or if she wants to do it, but she knows that she has that freedom and she can look whenever she wants, so it's kind of that – the feeling that you get when you're – at like a casual dance in high school and you're single and you think, man, tonight I might, I might be able to get a girlfriend. I might be able to talk to that one girl or something, or maybe I'll see, I'll see that varsity cheerleader and I'll be able to talk to her and get her number. Finally, it feels like there's infinite possibilities when you get out to the gym or that, that dance floor. And it kind of feels like that being here while she has, you know, all this freedom. And then at any moment I might get a text, which is a picture or a video of her doing something with someone else. And, just the idea that it could happen and that she has that power and that freedom is very exciting. Mm. And don't you ever uh, have, you know, don't you ever want to be with someone else? For me, for myself? Yeah. Um, like, I don't know where you are, but don't you find any dark-skinned people, you want, girls that you want to be with? <laughs> there are a lot of attractive girls out here, and... Um, you know, a lot of my friends who are single, especially in this line of work, there's a lot of uh, a lot of hooking up that goes on. Uh-huh. So, but for me personally, I don't think I could ever find someone who's even as close to as good as my girlfriend is. So it doesn't even show up. I can appreciate from a distance how attractive another girl may be, but I know that she's not my girlfriend, and I don't think I ever will find someone who's close to. Her how perfect she is. So but, I'm incredibly blessed. But it's not about replacing your girlfriend, right? So you're in a different country. Uh, you're not going to be able to have sex with your girlfriend. Don't you ever have the desire to sleep with somebody? Oh, hold uh, on. That might be a yes. That might be a yes. <laughs> Brian? I, I definitely have the desire to do something physical, but... To me, it's hotter to not be able to do it, and I guess that ties into the orgasm control and the edging, which is that it's harder for me to not be able to have sex than it is to be able to have sex because I like building up that tension and that, I guess they call it like blue balls or whatever, but I love that feeling. To me, I'm addicted to the feeling of like I, w- I want to do something, but I can't do it. I think you're addicted to something with the balls because you're like all over them. A lot of, yep, yep, it's something about that, huh? (laughs) Okay. Um, Okay, that leads us into uh, the next couple of things that that you say you're into. Uh, SPH, which, you know, like 40 episodes ago, I I wouldn't have known what it was, but small penis humiliation. And that very often goes hand in hand with cuckolding. Um, But that is something that turns you on as well. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, are you 
Like, well, so you've seen other guys. So let's not talk about porn because porn is so not reality, right? Right. But, you know, you've often been in showers and you've seen other men. How are you size-wise compared to most men? I would definitely say that I'm average. Um, I'm nothing like where someone would see me and be like, oh, he's, he's tiny. Um, but at the same time, no one would ever have anything to say about me being huge either. I'd say I'm just right about, or average is literally average. Okay. Which, uh, probably like is the majority of men, which is why they call it average. Right. Um, so then, uh, how did, does this mean then that your girlfriend's gonna have to find someone who's a lot bigger to be able to fulfill that kink of yours? Yeah, definitely. I think one thing that would help, though, is, you know, when you're in chastity, it prevents you from getting hard in the first place. So I'm definitely a, a grower, not a shower. So me being soft could definitely help with, like, the, the visual comparison between me and whoever the bull would be. Um and there are a lot of people out there who are above average, so it wouldn't. It's not as hard. And I don't know if the stereotypes are nece- necessarily true or not, because again, like you said, porn is not reality. Right. So there is the whole like BBC concept. Sure. And I haven't seen enough black penises, I guess, in person to say whether or not that's true. But if it is, then you know. That would be an easy place to look, I suppose. I would say most of us have not seen small ones. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Because if you've seen them, it's probably been because of porn or, you know, naughty Twitter, which is porn. Um, okay, right. dokie. All right. So then that moves us uh, into the next kink that you kind of started talking about, and that is edging or orgasm control. What else do they, do they call it something else? Because I think it's come up before in an interview and I I think I might've just like right through it because it didn't ring a bell or anything. Um, Or maybe it was just edging. That that's the term for it, right? I believe so. Yeah. I wonder if there's anything else, but um, okay. So how do you uh, practice that? Basically, it's getting yourself as close as possible to finishing and then not actually finishing. And then just kind of write, you could just write out not ever finishing. Or in one single session, let's say you could get close to finishing and then kind of cool off and then get close to finishing and then cool off or get close to finishing and then maintain where you are so that you just are right at the edge of release but not actually releasing. And, you know, some people at the end, they do get their release. Some people don't. Oh. And some people don't, and they get put in chastity. Oh. Well, that's that's kind of hardcore. Right? Yeah, absolutely. That is my – that's my my preferred way. Either I stay in chastity and I get edged or I get released from chastity. I get edged for however long, and then without no being release. able to finish, wow. I go back in. Yep. Okay. Uh, someone on our, uh, uh, someone on YouTube said ruined orgasm, which brings me yes. to, to a talk I had with uh, a porn star, Brittany Andrews, where she talks about that, but with like when it goes wrong, like you put it off so much that when you finally do have your orgasm, it, it kind of fizzles. It's like, boy, I should have just let it go the first time. Do you know what I'm talking about? Right. Of course. So you that's do. a ruined orgasm. That could, it could be, but, um, like the specifically to have a ruined orgasm, at least in the way that I know of would be to get someone really close and then to stop all kinds of physical, um, so no stimulation at right before you finish. So it's not like a full, um, it's not a full orgasm. Right. So kind of that's what causes it to kind of trickle out because nothing is stimulating it. And it's uh-huh. just kind of you're writing off the previous pleasure. Right. OK. So actually the term ruined orgasm is a like a, a sexual term that means what yes. you just talked about. I see. OK. So Brittany Andrews was just talking about an orgasm that was ruined. Right. OK. I'm learning all sorts of things from you, young man. Love it. I'm, I'm glad to be a part of the show. Um, okay. If you, 
Do you think you could be in a relationship where, like, your girlfriend wouldn't be into this? Like, before you said you could, but the more you get into it, um, do you think you could actually be in a relationship with someone who's not into it? I do. If if my girlfriend was to tell me that she is no longer comfortable with it, which I can't see that happening, but if that was the case, just to entertain the idea of it, I do think that I'd be able to do it. Um, it's it's more important that I have a healthy relationship at the end of the day than me pleasing myself through these fantasies. Wow. Like, I might be in love. You're so mature. That is so awesome. Um, okay, Brian, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through to see if anyone uh, listening has any questions for you. Um, if I asked you, like, what your ultimate fantasy is, right? What are you thinking about? What is that ultimate fantasy of yours? Are you there? Did we lose Brian? Oh, no. Well, I don't know if he's going to jump back on. By the way, you guys, I didn't even know he's out of the country. Um, sometimes my guests, like, really don't want to give away too much information about themselves. Brian is his actual name. Um, again, he's 22 years old. There he is. A U.S. Sorry, Marine. I lost. That's okay. We got yeah. you back. Uh, I don't know if you heard the question. The question was, what is your ultimate fantasy? Like, if you just could have it all, what would it be? Is is there a scenario that you could tell us about? Oh, boy. Ultimate fantasy. That's a good question. Uh, I would say if I was to just put it into, like, a 24-hour period of time, um, it would probably be I've already been in chastity for whatever, and in – an, un, an indefinite period of time so I've been locked up I haven't released for a long time so I'm still incredibly um, I'm still incredibly horny and I want release as badly as possible and the entire day I basically do whatever my girlfriend or I would refer to her, her as my goddess in that context I would say whatever you want I'll do for you so we start the day and I would take a shower with her and I'd wash her hair for her and I'd clean her body, dry her off. I would massage her and then, you know, play with her feet a little bit. I'd help her pick out her outfit for the day, help her get dressed. And then whatever it is that she wants to do, I'd go with her. I could carry her bags for her or drive her around. So you could make little, you know, teasing remarks about how people that we see out on the street, that's someone that she'd like to be with. And at the end of the night, maybe we go out for drinks. She finds someone. We take them back to our place or a hotel room or whatever. And the two of them, you know, interact with each other uh, in front of me. And all the while I get to record it or I just get to watch it live. And she'll tease me about how much bigger he is, how much better he is. And she'll have me come over while, while the two of them are doing something. I could continue to please her. So if he's... Um, I don't know, let's say that she's, um, she's giving him oral, I could come over and then I could, I could give her oral at the same exact time. So all of my actions are focused around pleasing her and doing everything that I can for her while she focuses on pleasing herself and pleasing the bull. Mm -hmm. Um, you're heterosexual. Have you ever thought, and I'm sure you've seen it in, in cuckolding porn, um, like, do you ever see yourself in a situation where you're interacting with the bull? Um, not me pleasing the bull in, in like an overtly sexual way. So I would probably not do anything, or no, I definitely wouldn't. I, I've thought about the idea of it, and I've written about it because I used to write erotic fiction for other people, oh. and so I can understand the attraction to it, but I can't bring myself to really. I can't bring myself to really be attracted to doing it. Um, I definitely get how it goes hand in hand with the kink, but for me personally, I couldn't do it. I don't think. Mm -hmm. um, would then I'm assuming you would never do the cuckold cleanup. 
That I that I would I would do, which oh. I know may seem ironic, but at least at least uh, I just won't put a penis inside of any part of me. That's basically like my limit. Uh okay. How about in your hand? Oh. There's wiggle room. I I hear wiggle room. <laughs> if if my girlfriend really wanted me to and in the right situation, I could wrap my head around doing that, but it would have to be for her. It'd have to be because she wants me to do it. Right. Okay. Very good. Um Anything that we haven't covered that uh, that you want to talk about? You're such a good um, interview. You're just, I love it. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm so happy to be on your show because I've watched every single episode that you came out with. On YouTube? On YouTube, yeah. And uh, even your karaoke, your, honestly, your karaoke <laughs> streams, those are my favorite, actually, of everything. <laughs> Why, thank you. Um, <laughs> hey, how old is your girlfriend? She's also 22. Okay, so you're, you are both very young people. I think it's amazing yes. how very communicative you are with each other and, and very mature. Um, all right, and, um, and I'm sure because of your work, again, being a, a Marine, uh, you don't want people contacting you. You don't, you don't have like a, tw like a naughty Twitter that I can direct people to. I used to have a uh, Reddit account that actually was decently popular, but uh -huh. I deactivated it because I needed to get a background check to do the specific job that I'm doing now. Oh. So I, re you know, it was painful to say goodbye to it, but uh -huh. I had to because, uh, you know, I couldn't pass this opportunity up. Nice. Um, I will share, you know what? I should just, I have the job now. I might as well just make I might as well just make a new account, honestly. Okay. Um, well, then when, when you do that, uh, and after I edit this episode and release it, I can then, you know, let me know what, what, what the new t account is, and I'll, I'll let our listeners know how they can um, reach out to you. Sure, if, absolutely. Do most people, do they use a, what are most people sharing, their Twitter or their Instagram or their Reddit or what? Most people are showing is sharing their Twitter. Um, I... I I know people in the lifestyle who have a, like a naughty Twitter. That's what they call it, naughty Twitter. But their Instagram account is like you wouldn't look at it and say, oh, yeah, they're in the lifestyle. It's just a regular Instagram account, right? And, right. and the same people who have pretty much like porn of themselves on Twitter have a perfectly normal Facebook account because those are the accounts where their real friends and families are. Uh, on Twitter, no one knows who they are. It's a lot easier right, to hide yourself uh, on Twitter. Okay. In that case, then my next step is I'm going to make a, a, a naughty a Twitter, Twitter for account. all you guys. Awesome. So we will let our listeners know. And um, all righty then. I can't wait. I would actually love to do some kind of follow-up uh, with you down the road and really see how far you, you go. Um, how long are you overseas for? Uh, I'll be here for a little bit under a year. Then mm. I'm going to be going to another country overseas. Wow. I'll be there for a year, and then I come back to the to the U.S. after that. Wow. And then during that time, are you able to come home and visit the girlfriend? I can, yeah. If I, if I take leave, oh. then I can either – I can do basically whatever I want to if I take leave, but those are basically our accumulated vacation days. I think she's actually going to come out here. And visit me here oh, because nice. she's never been to this country yeah uh -huh. and i could i could show her you know pretty good time out here and I, she'll probably bring um my cage and she'll probably bring some oh. other toys when she comes out here so who knows maybe nice. we'll actually do something while we're here nice um how open is your girlfriend about all this stuff do you think she'd talk to me uh, you know what she watches your videos with me uh -huh. i showed you to her uh -huh. and you know, I even when I saw your karaoke live stream, I was like, "Okay, we have to, we have to watch this together. We have to watch. This. We're gonna sing with her. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna sing along." Look, I love you guys. If, yeah, you you said like, if you're not drinking, that's what you should be doing, and I thought that was awesome. So I was like, "We gotta drink. We gotta sing along." <laughs> she sings all of our favorite songs. Um, awesome. But yeah, well, will you talk to her? Uh, because we actually have a request from someone on YouTube saying it would be awesome to hear. Uh, 
they think it's your wife, but awesome to, to hear from the girlfriend. Uh, right, of course. Yeah, so I would I would love to to talk to her. Uh, that would be cool. She's, <laughs> she's definitely a little bit more shy than right. I am about it, but um, mm-hmm. if I can do it, then she can definitely do it. I think I have, considering my job, there's a little bit more at stake than with her. She right. really doesn't have too much to lose. Uh-huh. But um, yeah, I told her that she should she should think about doing it because everyone loves to hear you know yeah. that side of. Exactly. The story. Exactly. And uh, another thing about that, and it's not for our, you know, whatever part of us that loves to hear about sex and all that stuff, but I think it's actually helpful to men who are cuckolds, who maybe haven't or aren't open about it, haven't discussed it with their wife, to hear from the female side of it, to hear that the female's not going to think less of you, that the female actually loves you and may be willing to do these things in a cuckold relationship. So I think it's actually very helpful to other men to hear from the female in a, in a cuckolding relationship. So just tell her that. Just tell, tell her that. Absolutely. And then she can come talk to me. That's right. Awesome. We got the script set up and everything. She's going to be on. (laughs) Awesome. Uh, Okay. Brian, thank you so much. Uh, I, this was a great conversation. So again, I'm going to stop myself from judging people by their age, because there was a concern. Oh, he's so young, but man, you uh, you got your stuff together, and I'm sure there are a lot of men out there hearing this who are kind of jealous that you've really, you know, found yourself and and enjoying yourself the way you are. What a great thank guest! You. Thank you, Brian, is what uh, people are saying on YouTube. So, okay, Brian, thank you, thank you. Have a what time is it where you are right now? Oh, this may be a way to find out where he is. It is, <laughs> it is uh, 11.08 p.m. Oh, my goodness. Well, dear, you go get some rest. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It is bedtime, Brian. Lights out. Got it? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm on it. There's something about, I love it when people say yes, ma'am to me. I don't know what it is. I'm going to have to look into that. I think you got maybe a little bit of inner femdom inside of you that's coming <laughs> I <out>. might. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Brian, thank you. Thank you so much for having me on. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Um, hold on here, and I'll upload it. Okay, cool. Thanks, Brian. Bye. Thank you. Take care. Uh-huh. Okay. Was Brian not awesome, you guys? Like, wow, right? Uh, okay. Cuckold is just the man relink relinquishing sexual responsibilities and pleasing her in bed. Well, I don't know. I Because I've talked to enough people in cuckolding relationships where it's very different. Some approach it from a very um, female-led way, and, and some of them are very male-led. So there are the male-led cuckolds where that's his kink. That's what he wants. She's going to do what he wants. And then there are the cucks who are in relationships that are like sincerely femdom where that's what she wants. He's going to do what she wants. Uh, So there you go. Brian just gave your next topic, femdom. Well, we do talk about it somewhat. The thing with femdom is that it's it's, uh, such an umbrella, right? That versus female-led relationship. So FLR and then cuckolding. And then there are, you know, the circles, you've seen them. This is this circle, and this is this circle, and this circle, and there's a little triangle. And boy, you guys in the triangle are having lots of fun. Um, I know that we do have an episode where we talk a little bit about all those differences with uh, Tatiana. I forget what episode that is. I'm going to pull, pull it up. I really should have these already pulled up. Because sometimes he'll talk about something, and I'm like, oh, yeah. So episode 84, which isn't on YouTube yet, but you'd, so you'd have to find uh, the actual podcast. Um, so episode 84 is FLR versus Femdom versus Cuckolding. Um, by the way, I also talked to Tatiana's cuck husband. That is in a later episode. His episode is episode 87 called she owns me and oh she does 
You should hear his conversation about what their relationship is like. Um, okay, so I wanted to, uh, the Venn diagram of awesomeness. <clears throat> yep, right? Uh, Kyle McConnell, you definitely have some femdom in you. You think so? So Kyle is a personal friend. I mean, I'm very assertive, but I don't know. So here's the interesting thing. Hello, Turkish cuckold. The, the interesting thing is the way people are in bed may not be kind of what you see. Like, like most cuckolds I've talked to are very assertive. Um, many are alphas outside of the bedroom, which actually makes complete sense to me because inside of the bedroom, they want to be totally different. They want to just let go of all that control, right? Um, Mia, do you cuck your man? No, I'm not in the lifestyle. And if I was in the lifestyle, that probably would not be the lifestyle I would be in. Um, Sayo, did he talk about watching cuckold porn? Well, we talked a little bit about porn. Um, and if you don't know yet, you all should know that porn is not reality. Porn is not reality. Can we all say that? Porn is not reality. And, and porn is probably responsible for many, many bad things uh, as, it, as it pertains to sexuality. One, men don't measure up figuratively and literally to what they see in porn. Women don't have orgasms like that, mostly what you see in porn. Mm -mm, doesn't happen. In fact, if she's like wild and like bucking and no, honey, she's acting. She thinks there's a camera rolling, right? Uh, what else do we see in porn? Porn makes it look like the cuckold male gets nothing out of it, right? That it's forced upon him. Most cuckolding that I've heard about from people who are in it is not like that. So, uh, yeah. VR porn is kind of amazing, though I think everyone should try it at least once. Well... The, the everybody should try it at least once thing, like, I don't, I don't uh, agree with that for most things. So I'll take this to an extreme. Sometimes there are just things that you know you're not going to like, right? Like, let's say bestiality. Probably not a... Oh, you should try it at least once. Like, don't judge it. And don't knock it till you try it. No, no. There are just some things we know we're not going to be into. Um, okay. Right. And then, like, uh, someone is saying they're certain that they are okay without CBT. Which, did you guys know what CBT stood for? I didn't until today. I learned something. Like, I love that. Um, and again, CBT is another thing that I would say most men are okay not trying at least once. Right? Okay. Porn is supposed to feed your fantasy. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if that's true. Um... I think porn is, uh, I don't know how to say this. I think porn is just for instant gratification. I think that's the PC way of saying what I'm trying to say. You know what I'm trying to say? 
Uh, Kyle says, according to porn, lots of women get stuck in a dishwasher until a stepbrother finds them. Right. That's another thing. What is this about the whole family thing? Like, is it a matter of being so taboo? Because, ew, like the incestuous thing? Because that shows up, right? Like, you know, my stepsister this and... Okay. Um, like, for instance, Jeff thinks VR anything, porn, games, whatever, <laughs> literally gives him motion sickness. It's horrible. Yeah, so I don't think VR porn would be good for you. No. No, no, no. Unless you're into vomit, which, by the way, there are people into that. Mm, I'm not kidding. I haven't found them yet, but I haven't been looking either. Um, we often use it as foreplay to our foreplay. Well, congratulations. I think most porn studios, especially in the West, are creatively bankrupt. Yeah. So, uh, okay, F for you guys watching right now who also watch porn, you know who you are. Actually, if you don't watch porn, tell me. Okay, let's wait. Who doesn't watch it? Who doesn't watch porn? Who doesn't? And we're probably not going to get that hand raise. Um, and of you people who watch porn, how many of you are um, are into the uh, the amateur stuff versus the stuff that clearly is produced, you know, the perfect lighting, that whole thing. What do you prefer? Anyone who doesn't watch porn is obviously lying, right? Porn is a library of people's fantasies. You have a dark fantasy. There's a category. Mm -hmm. Poker stiff. Here comes poker stiff again. Poker stiff is always asking personal questions of me. Um, but yes, I need a, I, you know what I need? I need a, uh, a moderator for this chat because I can't tell you, you guys, so many of your uh, comments are being held for review. Uh, and so I'm trying to, mm-hmm. Amateur and 70s porn is what EL3 is into. And, and is 70s porn like, um, what is 70s porn other than from the 70s? Like what is considered 70s porn? Is like like the hairy stuff maybe? I don't know. Okay. Um, Ticket Black, howdy, welcome back. You missed a good episode. He... Okay, for, for anyone who has been listening, who listened to the guest, wasn't he a great interview? I love it when I get a guest who, like, is well-spoken and, like, not... Sh and here's the thing. It's not like he got super graphic or anything. I so enjoyed that conversation. I mean, like, it helped me understand something that I think is so, like, out there, right? He was great. Uh, Harold Schultz says porn is like professional wrestling. It's fake, but sometimes entertaining. I, 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 I approve that message. Um, have you thought about doing audiobooks, voiceover work? Yeah, the voice for it. I, I do my real, my job, my real job. I do voiceover work. I have done audiobooks, and thank you. Some of the amateur stuff is being shot by pros to make it look more like amateur. Okay, well, whatever. It's better than watching something where you know there's like, you know, people drinking coffee over here waiting for them to hurry up and get the shot. Um, okay. Andrew says he strictly prefers amateur IR type porn with hubby doing cleanup. What is IR? Strictly prefer amateur IR type porn. Tell me what that means. Uh, 
Poker stiff. See, Lena wants us to share our deepest, darkest secrets. Well, no. I don't. Not you guys. If you want to, great. But when I bring a guest on, I'm going to ask questions. Why? Because I'm the host. And why am I talking about their sex life? Because the show's about sexuality. You got to know. You see how that works. Mm-hmm. Uh, Seyo says, all I can say is that Japanese girls can actually act. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. I'm not going to read the rest of that. From what I've seen and what I've heard, what do you mean the Japanese girls know how to act? That's all they're doing. In fact... I wonder if, like, in a real relationship, are they making those noises in a real relationship? Or is it only because they're making porn? Hi. Tertius Cuckold, does size matter? Um, oh, interracial, IR, interracial. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, depends on the person. I would say most women would say yes, but probably not the way you're thinking of. Right. I've uh, Go back and... So, professional, like, sex worker, right? Uh, what episode is she? Go to episode... you got to find my podcast. Oh, actually, it's on YouTube as well. It's the episode with Brittany Andrews, who's a sex worker, who talks about, like what sex is like when she's working, and then sex for personal, like for pleasure, and also about size and all that. It's really funny because she talks about how she's been doing it so much now, and it's not so much the size thing. It's more like building up a tolerance for for kink or for something that, you know, just something else. Uh, I'm not going to repeat what she said just because, I don't know, I guess I'm a prude. I can't do it. That's something that they've got to say. I'm not going to put those words in my mouth. I'm not going to put those words in my mouth. Uh, it's interesting. She does talk about size, whether it matters. Uh, you know, Peter says he's got to watch Japanese porn on mute, right? Okay, go back. Who is the one? Oh, there are a couple of interviews with Japanese porn stars. They're... They've been interested in accenting the excitement, moaning, yelling, crying, etc. Ticket, are you the same person who says that Japanese... Oh, no, it's Seiyo. All I can say is the Japanese girls can actually act. And they put a lot of time and effort into the set and script. How many of you are watching the porn for script? Please raise your hand. Say, oh, you got to raise yours because you, you seem to think that's important. Everyone who thinks the script, they're, they're watching porn for the script, please raise your hand. Uh, there are a couple of interviews with Joe. Okay, we already read that. Censorship of private parts. Japanese porn ruins everything. <laughs> do, so do they... Aren't there any without the digitization, the pixelation of stuff? Yeah. Ray. Ray says he watches porn for uh, for the script. Um, Anand Mishra says I don't watch for script but Japanese porn is full of innovation what does that mean innovation in porn what what does that mean like I'm not being a whatever I'm actually asking what are you talking about 
Sayo says, I think the setting is important because I'm watching VR. Well, okay, but you're, you know, you're the dude who's watching VR porn, which is kind of different from the porn that other people are watching. Okay, by the way, y'all, so someone just sent this to me, and I sent it to a friend. In fact, he's, he may still be on here. Um, for 2021, the stats, okay, the stats are back for 2021 from Pornhub. Okay, this is a report from Pornhub that the most searched, first of all, cuckolding used to be the most searched porn. Not anymore. Mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. It is now, now I want to make sure I pr pronounce it right, is that anime stuff. Is that hentai, 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 tai, tai, hentai, hentai. Hi. Hentai. That's the number one search on Pornhub. Surpassing both Japanese and lesbian, which means Japanese and lesbian are then the other two top searches. So, as awful as I think it is, a lot of people like Japanese porn. Mm. Um, Jeff says porn is better with a good script rather than just sex noises. I, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm not with you guys on that. I, I'm not with you on the script thing. Hi, Brian Wood. Lena, I'm a retired cop and Harley Davidson rider. I'm surrounded by swingers. Great everyday people. Yes. You've probably heard me saying it on my podcast many times. Lots of law enforcement officers in the lifestyle and firefighters, and healthcare workers. So, I don't know, is there a correlation between, like, jobs that are, like, have a lot of um, pressure, uh, is it pressure that I'm talking about? You know, I don't know. I hate it when the scene gets really hot, and it obviously breaks because it needs, it needs to, to follow, follow some, some sort, sort of script. script. Gosh, I, I, don't I don't know, know you guys. guys. Lena, Lena has, has a chip, chip on her shoulder. shoulder. I, don't I don't have, have a chip, chip on my shoulder. I'm just, just honest. I tell, I tell you what, what I think. And, and just because, because I don't think what you think, I don't, I don't have, have a chip on my shoulder. In fact, you have a VR chip on your shoulder. It's huge. I mean, look, uh, Everybody, look at it. Sayo has a huge freaking VR chip on his shoulder. Sayo says most porn is degenerate and awful, but there are people who see it as an art and try to look for those studios who are really trying. Okay, whatever. We're just talking about porn. Chill. Uh, Brian says, I think it's the alpha personality and authority jobs. Uh, you're absolutely right. Um, and not just that. So, Brian, and, and tell me if you think this. So, it's also people in jobs where, one, they have lots of responsibility. Uh, sometimes they have a lot of authority. Um, and in the bedroom, they just want to let that go. I've also found that people who... Maybe, and I don't know if it has age or just they're doing better in life. Maybe they're retired. They've got some disposable income. A lot of them are swingers because, uh, one, they can afford the lifestyle of traveling to these different resorts, traveling to meet people, you know, joining clubs, going to clubs, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. Um. I don't know what Ticket Black is talking about. Yes, but we also grow more emotionally attached when we save lives together. Are you are you talking about like healthcare workers or uh, law enforcement or something? I don't know. 
uh, we all having fun here, right? Speaking freely. Yeah, totally. That's why we're doing it. But hello, you don't tell me that I have a chip on my shoulder just because I don't think that Japanese acting is great in porn. You know. uh, swinging is favorite sex of me and my wife. We love it mentally and physically. That's Mr. Mishra saying that. PR workers. Who was on your show on Monday? Oh, this coming Monday or, or the past Monday? Because uh, I'll look it up. Tell me. Tell me which one you're talking about. So this past Monday, the guest on the show is a lawyer. Lots of lawyer swingers. Swinger lawyers. Which comes first? This Monday. So this Monday uh, is episode 90. It's called The Situational Cup. So he is a lawyer. Both he and his wife married um, as virgins because they're very religious, grew up Southern Baptist. Uh, and now they're in the lifestyle. And it looks to be like a cuckolding lifestyle. It turns him on. But he can also see himself being with other women. The wife can't take it right now. The wife is okay sleeping with other men. He's okay with it. He'd like to sleep with other women, wife not okay with it. So maybe down the road, they may be swingers. But right now, they're situational cuck. Okay? Brian says, Lena, interesting enough, my wife is Asian, Filipino, and we've been indirectly invited by friends to get-togethers. My wife says she's very Catholic, and it goes against her values. Okay, Brian, and I'm going to say this at the risk of... Um, of you thinking that I'm insulting your wife, I am not. This is from personal experience and talking to lots of friends who have had personal experience with Filipinas. They're sexually deviant. They're sexually deviant. Why are they sexually deviant? Because they were raised so Catholic. And then when they let go, they let go. Tell me this. Is your wife especially jealous because I've also heard that many of them are extremely jealous. Um, oh, you were joking. Okay, you're joking. Sayo was joking when he said that I had a chip on my shoulder. Um, did I miss Lena singing anything today? No, no, no. There was no singing today. Uh, that was an interesting episode. Which one? The situational cuck? Really, it was. And he's so, you guys, if you listen to that episode, there's this quality in the way he talks to me that, so th he's a lawyer, okay? But he has this giddy, like, little boy just sharing the secret. There's just so something so adorable <laughs> about, this man sharing this with me, um, they're not open. So, you know, other than the people that they're in it with, like his friends and family don't know. And there was just something very cute in the way he's telling me these stories. And he's very uh, shy. He's, well, I mean, he's a little shy. But maybe because of the way they were raised, like the words that he used were also not, typical of what swingers, you know, like he's very, uh, you know, he uses the V word, by the way, I hate the V word. Like even when I was in news and I had to read that word, I hated it. And the producers knew I hated reading the word. So guess who always gets that script? Uh, but the V word. And then he uses the, the, the P word. So instead of saying all that other stuff. Um, <clears throat> Lena is so sexy and lovely woman. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yeah, those reserved people will teach you some things, right? Brian says, yeah, she can be jealous and insecure, but I think a lot of that can be attributed to her childhood and the lack of a fatherly figure. Okay, here's another thing I'm going to say. And again, I don't mean to offend anybody. I'm sure I will, but, you know, at this age... 
I, I, I don't care as much anymore. And again, this comes from many, many conversations I've had with people involved uh, with Filipinas. So this one person said this, and I'm like, oh my God, that's awful. I can't believe you said that. And then I started asking around just like I was asking you. And I was like, oh, well then, you know. So very often there's a little truth in stereotypes, right? I mean, that's how they became a stereotype. So he told me, and when I say all, I don't mean all, so don't come back and, and attack me for this. I'm just telling you what this person said. But he said, all Filipinas are sexually deviant, and all of the men in the family have been in and out of jail. I'm just saying. And, and I, of course, it's a personal experience from that person using generalities, not fair. I have many Filipino friends uh, well, who've only done like one day in jail. I'm mean, like, they're not like in prison or anything. But uh, I, I do hear that very often. And I don't know if it's, you know how you're often told that like Latina women ha- are like fiery. And again, that's a stereotype. Mm. It came from somewhere. Uh, Jeff says, my wife knows she couldn't handle me with another woman. Flip side to that coin, I don't want to be with another woman. Disappointing one woman in bed is enough. Ha ha. There are men who are going to say that any man who says he has no desire to be with another woman is lying. And I will tell you, they're not. I'm sure some of them are. Why? Because she'd cut it off if she ever caught him saying otherwise, right? There, there are men who are completely fine, satisfied with whoever they're with. They don't even look at other women. So, and I, I'm not saying this to brag. And sometimes if you think back to your past relationships, you could probably see that we often attract the same type of person, right? Or at least you're attracted to a certain type of person. Therefore, you'll end up in the kind of the same types of relationships. I've always been in a relationship where the man has like, like, like I'm the one who has to point out a good looking girl in the room. And, and I've always felt that like I'm the only girl he sees, you know, like I've never, oh, one time I had a, uh, I dated a guy who had wandering eyes. And not just wandering eyes. Well, wandering, wandering eyes don't bother me. This is, what, this is what bugged me. By the way, his ex-wife was a Filipina. Who? He, oh, my gosh, he told me some horror stories. Who was so jealous that when this guy was laid up in a hospital bedroom after a very bad accident with like the whole leg thing, you know, when you see that she accused him of having an affair with the nurse and punched him in the balls in front of their kids. Okay. So that's how fiery she was. Anyway. So I was how old? I was 23. He was 36. I'd always found myself just more attracted to older men. I, I think I've, like, was always very mature for my age. Could not stand guys my age. He didn't have a wandering eye. He had this very bad habit. And as a young girl, I hated it. We would be at a restaurant or wherever, and like a good looking woman would walk by or come in or something, he would make eye contact with that person. So it's not just like looking at a person. I look. He would make eye contact with that person. So after the 10th time it happened, here's this 23-year-old Lena scolding my then 36-year-old boyfriend. And I said, you know, that's so disrespectful because 
I'm sitting right across from you. Like, you can look at them, but I see you making eye, like, you know, when you make eye contact, you connect with somebody? That's different, right? And he's the only man I've ever dated who did that. And it bothered the hell out of me because, and maybe it was jealousy. I don't know. I thought, I felt it was disrespectful. Like, I would never do that. So anyway, but the rest of them, all of my relationships have been with men who adored me. Like, I couldn't understand why my girlfriends were so jealous and, you know, afraid of losing their boyfriends. And like, I didn't have that fear or insecurity. In fact, like, I'd be like, oh, look at her. Look, she's pretty. I'd be the one pointing it out. Um, so anyway, sorry, here's Lena again going on a tangent. I do that. So Jeff, I believe you. I believe that you, you don't want to be with another woman because like all the men in my life have been that way. Um, Mishra, me and my wife are a lawyer and we have done swinging with our lawyer friends, but it's not allowed in our society and religion. They hate it. Okay. You know, it's really not allowed like in any society. Like, as much as it happens out there, like, the reason why my show is so popular is because it's still so taboo. Like, it's not accepted, except within swinging circles. So, whatever country, and I know some countries are better than others, right? Uh, Love makes men dumb. Oh. Love makes women stupid, too. So you need to find that person where that love like doesn't do that to you, right? Or you're not, not making bad decisions. Um, Kyle's wife points out the hotties for hit to him. Yeah. See, and I dig chicks like that. Like I, like that's a that's a girl with confidence. It's like, like I can appreciate a a, a beautiful woman. I can appreciate beauty. I can look and see and in my head think, oh, she's pretty. And then there are women who are like trained on their boyfriend or husband. And he so much as to move that eyeball within 90 degrees of where this chick is, I'm going to kick him under the table. What a miserable way to be. All right. Never lost Romer says Lena tells the best stories. Why? Thank you. Uh, Peter, I do appreciate beauty. Wife, not appreciate my admiration. Ha. Uh, Poker Stiff says, Lena, that eye contact is not just disrespectful. It's a guy that just doesn't value you. Well, right. That's, and that's the way I saw it. And, oh, man, it bothered me. I'll tell you what, though. I mean, now looking back, I can see how ridiculous ridiculous it was that this 23 year old girl in a relationship with this 36 year old man and I was scolding him like he was 16 Mm -hmm. and that was the last time he made eye contact Lena unconscious queen so when you say queen what do you mean so I'm seeing a lot of the same terms with lifestyle people whether it's queen goddess or mistress Mistress, m- mistress and God is kind of under the femdom thing, right? I don't know if queen also, queen also falls in there or whatever, but um, I hope that's a compliment. I hope that's a compliment. One day, my husband just, you know, he uses a lot of pet terms for me. And one day... He said, God, you're a goddess. And oh my God, I was like, what? And, for so, and he's never used that. He just like was just, I don't know. I don't even remember the circumstance. Um, and I was like, oh, I liked hearing that. Okay. I digress. Can taboo be one of the reasons swinging cuckolding lifestyle is such a turn on? 
Oh, well, of course. See, that we know. You don't need to show it to tell you that. Right? The more taboo it is, uh, the more of a turn on it is. So, like, let's go back, oh, I don't know, uh, let's say 100 years. Do you remember those days? Oh, was, it didn't get as hot. Okay. Let's go back 100 years. 100 years ago, let's imagine what it would have been like for people to see a couple French kissing in public. Right? Like, right, well, and just how taboo that would have been back then. And then I think as time goes on, that just becomes normal. It's no big deal anymore. And when it's no big deal anymore, then it's not a big deal. So, yes, taboo. Um, it is. Queen is probably the lighter of the mistress term. Strong women for sure. Oh, all right. Yeah, I don't like, like mistress and queen, I don't, um, like I know I'm not a mistress, right? The term queen kind of just doesn't, it doesn't fall nicely on my ears. But God, it sure sounds good. Okay. Poker shift. I hope you jumped your hubby's bones. Williams, what would you say if your husband said he wanted to give you a hall pass one night? I'd actually say, I don't want it. And I'm not, I'm not just saying that because I am now publicly talking about this. But just honestly, just no desire. Just like Jeff with if we can take Jeff by his word, you may choose not to believe me. I don't care. But that's my answer. Um, okay. Oh, my gosh, you guys, I forgot. Today's Friday. Awesome, right? So uh, for anyone here who is, um, who's been on my Buy Me a Coffee site, and if you haven't, I think there's something on YouTube you can click on it. So it's called buymeacoffee.com slash Lena Wynn. So... It's a membership for all things kind of kinky. And uh, we have this thing called Friday Confessions. So it's people like you telling me a story, making a confession. So like, for instance, maybe you don't have anything to go on the show with, like right for a whole half hour of conversation. But maybe there's this instance where something happened and you want to share it with me. Uh, And some of these people have actually sent in real photos. So I've posted what I can. Some of it I can't because it it would get me kicked off. Um, But those are for our members. So today is Friday. Normally I would have put on a Friday confession. Got some of them waiting, waiting to be told. These confessions are good. They're so, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's that whole taboo thing. It's like hearing someone confess something to you. And so I've only now, because I don't have the time, put two of them on YouTube. And it's like, to me, it's like erotica. It's like porn or whatever. And I just don't feel comfortable making it. Um, public. So there's actually a membership on YouTube and it's not a lot, but it helps me control who's seeing them. Uh, Peter's playing devil's advocate. Would you give your hubby a hall pass? Totally. Here's the thing. He wouldn't take it either. (sighs) Um, Mishra, is eye contact during sex important for all men and women or mostly for women? (laughs) Trying to think of the last time I made eye contact. I don't know. 
Is that a stereotypical thing to say that mostly women want eye contact during sex? I never really even thought about it. That's a good thing to think about. Like, when's the last time you actually made eye contact during sex? Hmm. All right. It's interesting to think about for a bit there. Uh, EL3, I'm curious about why do men want to see other men make love with their daughters, wives, or girlfriends? There are men who want to watch their daughters? Ah, uh, I don't think so. Where have you heard this? EL3. Seriously, tell me now. Where have you heard that? Where? What do you mean, yes? Where have you heard that? And do not, well, I'm going to wait for your answer. <clears throat> I haven't heard it anywhere. Well, then why'd you say it? Why did you ask why men want to see, like, if you haven't heard it anywhere, why would you ask that question? It is porn for sure. Yeah, I was going to say, don't even bring up porn because breaking news, that's really not his daughter. Hello, EL3. Oh, should you even be on this? Like, Uh, Jeff says, you can take me at my word. I only want my wife. She, however, really enjoys the variety and has been with other, oh, with over 40 other men in the last year. Oh. Jeff, how come you and your wife haven't come on my show? Wow. Okay. Uh, EL3 says, I've did it. Meaning what? I've done what? You have to like speak in full sentences because you have to know that there are other people chatting, right, right? Meaning you've, you've watched your daughter? EL3, is that what you're saying? Don't make me assume. Don't make me assume because you know what happens when we assume. Jeff says, too busy with work. I get almost no days off. Uh, and yet you've only spent an hour and a half watching this YouTube. Don't give me that. Don't give me that. Too busy. Never heard of it. Seriously, EL3, you've done what? Now I want to know. And then I'm going to ask you where you're from. Not here to judge. Well, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm, I'm judging. I'm judging. Anyone who wants to watch their daughter do that is, that's, seriously. Mian wants to uh, have a cuckolding with his girlfriend. Have you talked to her yet? Have you talked to her? Um, okay, you guys. Uh, EL, uh, look, look at this. Now, now he's getting. <laughs> Hold on. Where is that comment? I approved it. I want to see. I want to read it. Stop playing with me, hostess. Host. I'm the host of the show. A hostess is someone who shows you to your table of four. All right? I've had men watch me have sex with their daughters. How do you know that they're really their daughters? Dễ thương quá, đẹp quá. Oh, my God. Thank you. 
uh, Mian says, we both want to, but nervous to do it in real life. Yep, I'm sure that happens a lot with a lot of uh, couples. What you really should do, if you haven't already, is go listen to all the different episodes I've had on, on cuckolding because, like, they're all kind of different. Like, no one is the same. And you'll hear how they got started. You'll hear what they did and, you know, the conversations they had to have and what they actually did. So you should do that. I've taken men's daughters on dates, so. So what? Like every daughter has a father, right? Every woman was a daughter? So anyone who's taken a woman on a date has taken a man's daughter out. What's your point? Okay, silly logic doesn't work here with me. All right? I'm going to tell you that right now. So that's not a chip on my shoulder. It's a freaking hammer, and I'm going to bring the hammer down if you make silly logic. E- EL two and a half needs to get blocked. That's funny. Um, Fabio says, uh, want my girlfriend to cuck me, but she's not interested, sadly. Well, that's the other thing. If someone's not interested, you can't, don't talk them into it. Don't force them into it. Don't shame them into it. Don't. Find someone who is into it. Like if it's more important to you, then find someone else. If she's more important to you, then you're just going to have to do without, right? That's the way it goes. Hey, Lena, what is the title of the most downloaded or listened to episode? Well, I haven't looked in some time. Um, so I would have to look. I can tell you just from, you know, um, the Tom Likas one was, was um, the most popular of last year. But all of the cuckolding episodes do extremely well. And then, of course, episode one does very well because it's episode one. It's like, and if you listen to it now, you guys, one, you'll find out why I'm doing the show. Two, you're going to hear it and you're going to be like, I was so naive. Like, I didn't know any of it. Didn't know the terms. I mean, so having already listened to later episodes, if you listen to episode one now and forget that it's the first episode, you're going to be like, why is Lena pretending she doesn't know? I didn't. Holly Randall did a podcast of a male talent was hired for cuckold wives. There, there are many. So there are female sex workers and there are male sex workers. So that's like nothing new and it happens. Um, Ekman 65, your podcast is my favorite Play episodes every time I get in the car. Love it, but you got to be careful. You got to be careful. If you ever have kids in the car, this has happened to so many people. They get in the car, it turns on, episode starts playing right where you left off, and you're frantically trying to turn it off. And now, with these days, with. So be careful. Parents are always trying to hook their kids up with someone. I'm not saying they're voyeurs, though. Okay, ticket, I, I don't know where you're from, what, whatever you're into. I know no parents who try to hook up their kids for sex. I know some only because I've read about them in news stories. Okay, I'm not here to judge. That's... Anyway, uh, Ekman says, yes, I know. It happened once. Now I mute with passengers. Yes. Yes. el three is from D.C. Well, that, well, yeah. Um, so Jeff says, he just sent me an email on my website. If you want my story, I will tell it. Jeff, I would love to tell your story. But stop coming up with excuses, gosh darn it. 
And hell, if you're too busy, I'll talk to your wife. Okay. All right. I feel like I've been running a seminar. Uh, okay, you guys. So that was fun. I'm so glad we... Wait, hold on a second here. Get on my calendar. Make sure that I am not missing something. Yep, it's all good. It's all good. Good, 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 good. <clears throat> all right. Uh, Debbie Crumb. Hi, Debbie. You're a newbie here. Wait, what do you mean? Hey, you guys, we got a newbie in the room. What do you mean by newbie? Meaning you just got on? You just found my channel? What do you mean? Peter says, love you and the show. Peter, thank you. Lena is the Dr. Ruth of the 21st century. Uh, Mian says, also a newbie here. Yeah, but... Uh, like, again, I don't know what Debbie means by newbie, so newbie on my channel. Well, welcome, Debbie. Only a couple of rules, like, you know, we can talk about anything. But once you start, like, if you start, um, like, being mean and insulting people just because they're not into what you're into, then you get blocked. And I haven't had to block many, right? I haven't had to block many. Uh, Ekman65 is amazed how turned on he gets when he hears the stories. Ha. NWA says, actually, I do know of one mom who hooked her son. Uh, I don't know if that means for sex, but it was with her friend and her son was 25. Yeah, that's, I don't know, that's a little different. Uh, me on subscribe today. Thank you. Th oh, and by the way, how come we only have 50 likes on this? Is everyone right watching right now? Have you, you know, done the whole thingy? Because what that does is it helps our analytics, right? Right, right. And because I'm doing it live, I don't, I don't know how many viewers we have. Um, Oh, look at this. Now the, like, the likes are going up. So if you haven't yet, please do that. And the other thing is, apparently, it helps analytics on Google's, I mean, on uh, whatever this is, YouTube, so that when we do stuff like this, um, it, it'll put it out there in front of more people so that more people you will know when YouTube says, oh, people like this. Okay, they'll, they'll spit it out more. Uh, so thank you for subscribing, Mian. Uh, ML says, my wife and I love, that's all capitals, by the way, love your podcast. We are starting in the lifestyle and use your content as a user guide. Hmm. I'm, so, I'm so happy to hear that. Uh, Poker Stiff says, rule number one is yes, don't make Lena bring the hammer down. That's true. That's true. Like if you use stupid logic or silly logic, like the fuzzy math, I, I, I have such a hard time dealing with that. So as long as you make sense, right? And making sense doesn't mean that I have to agree. By the way, congrats on your sobriety. I have nine years. Who are you talking to, Ekman? Congrats on whose sobriety? How do you pronounce your last name? Win. Win. Although I went in for my physical yesterday, and I'm always prepared. I'm always prepared to hear my last name butchered. The nurse opens the door and she says, Ms. Nagoyan? Yep, that's me. Uh, so there you go. Right, right. Okay. So yes, thank you, you guys. Thanks for the like. So hit the like, thumbs up. It, it helps us do better. Oh, crack a lackle. 
Mm, that felt good. Uh, sorry, I thought you said on your podcast you don't drink anymore because it became a problem. I think you're getting podcasts mixed up. Or you're getting me mixed up with my guests. So Brittany Andrews uh, is sober. And actually, I think that's the only sober guest we've had on the show. Um, I used to be allergic to alcohol. So, like, I had this one bad night, you guys, in college. Oh, my God. And then after that, any little bit of alcohol I had, like, I wouldn't be able to breathe. My face would puff up. Um, I'd get hot. It was awful. And I remember, so this was, was this, yeah, okay, so this is still in college. Remember going to a bar, anyone from St. Louis, with friends from the TV station where I interned. And, you know, I'm trying to be, I had like maybe two sips. And if anyone's ever passed out, you're going to know what I'm talking about. This is the one to, only time it's happened to me. The sound starts getting muffled, and literally, you guys, it everything starts like this, blacking when you are about to pass out. It starts to go black like this. And I kind of wake up, and I don't know how long. I don't think it was really that long. They brought me out back for some fresh air. And my friend told me, so they asked if you were diabetic. And I said, no, she's Vietnamese. But anyway, so I don't, I don't have tolerance. I will get like hoo hoo buzzed after one sip. Wine gives me a headache. I don't like getting headaches. I won't drink it. Beer tastes like, like who drinks beer? I don't drink beer. And then over the years, I've thought, gosh, you know, and people always gave me a hard time for ordering juice. So then I tried to start um, building up my tolerance for alcohol. And although I don't, like I never, I don't get the, uh, the hives and the thing anymore because I don't, you know, I know what the limit is. So like, you know, a few sips. But I'm still like total lightweight. And when I do drink, it would be like, it ha- it, like, like a really nice bourbon. Mmm. Like, that sounds good. So now I get it. Like, for people who really like wine or whatever, I get it because it it's like food. It's like, oh, that sounds good. But I can only take, I will, the pour has to be like this, and then it'll last me all night. And to me, I think it's medicinal. And the way I found my way to bourbon is I was sick one time, and a friend said, oh, you should try some whiskey. I actually looked it up, found that some people do use it for medicinal purposes. So I was on the airplane. I wasn't feeling very well. And I ordered the Jack Daniels thingy. And I had like, Two sips. Felt all nice and warm. Mm. And then we talk to people about it, and they're like, oh, yeah, you should try bourbon. So I like bourbon. Good night, Ticket Black. Uh, the Asian Glow, that's totally me. Yeah, yeah, totally me. But not only, so I go from red, my face starts to heat up like I'm on fire. Like you touch my face, it's like hot, hot. And I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm going to, I'm, I'm like puffy. And I feel like all the makeup that I wear, you know, soaks into my skin. That's what I feel. And everyone's like, no, you look the same. Uh, oh boy. Uh, no, I'm live on YouTube right now. L O L. Okay. <clears throat> Fun chat. I like Brandy because she's a fine girl. What a good wife she would be. 
My wife shares all of her dirty fantasies with me, and I love it. I think honesty is the sexiest thing a woman can have. And man. And man. It's an art to get to Balmer's point and not to get too drunk or too sick. What's Balmer's point? Is that something I'd, like, I've never heard of it? Uh, okay, you guys. Has everyone actually done the whole thumbs up thing? Liked, liked this? Please. Okay. As I'm learning this whole YouTube thingy, been told that that's important, so whatever, to, to do it. Oh, my friend's in Miami for a month. I liked you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Why is it that that is? Like some women actually don't like it when, when someone says yes, ma'am to them. I don't know why. I love it. Any, like I love it. Like when someone says yes, ma'am, there's just something about it. Like my ears, you know how, like, oh, sorry. You could be talking about something and then, and then the, a word just strikes you a certain way. When someone says, yes, ma'am, to me, I'm like, oh, all righty then. Montes, cozy evening. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. All right, y'all. Um, it is 3.12. I am, uh, I'll probably get a lot of messages after this because I did after the last one. And people are like, how come, you know, people who miss it, why didn't you tell me I'm going? You're going live. I missed it again. When are you going again? Don't you have a schedule? Uh, no, I don't have a schedule. Right? I just happen to decide. Oh, let's go live today. So there. Um, Jamie Von Tees. Hi, Lena. Love your shows. I'm a lifelong sissy girl, and you're so helpful to the trans community. Thank you. Like. I really appreciate that. I mean, I know it's a turn on for a lot of people and they love hearing the juicy stories. But like to me, it should be educational for people. And educational doesn't mean, doesn't have to be boring. doesn't have to be serious. Sometimes it is. But, you know, if you can impart knowledge and help people understand things better, maybe become a little more tolerant of each other, that's like awesome. Right. Peter says people don't want to hear yes, ma'am, because it makes them feel old. Is that it? Yeah, you're right. You're probably right. Yeah, no, uh, maybe because I am old that I don't care. I like hearing it. And my husband is from the South, so he naturally says it. Um, so even like when he says it in text, it like, Oh, I like that. Did you like Yes Ma'am when you were in your 20s? I don't recall. Oh, sorry if it's not evening at your place. Ha ha. Ah, no, it's not, but that's okay. It's it's late afternoon. Uh, Lena, you like uh, Yes Ma'am because you are a closeted goddess. Honey, I'm out of the closet. I don't mind being a goddess. I don't know what all that means, but Lena, there is a way on the YouTube on on YouTube where you can give a thirty minute notification before your live stream starts. Okay, well, I don't I don't know how to do that. One, two, I am not kidding you when I say I literally decide to go live and then bring it up and go live. So I was supposed to interview Brian today, and I'm like, Hey, do you care if we? Do this live. That would, this might be kind of cool. Yeah, I don't care. And then we did it. Um, can't even. Carilli, Carillos? Carillos? You don't look old enough, though. Honey, I am, I think I'm 52. I might be 53 this year. Let me see. Uh, and proud of it.
I'm signing. Oops, off. Okay. Um, so I was born in 1969. It is now 2222219. Oh, oh. oh, I just made myself born in 1696. Oh, <coughs> I'm 53. <laughs> So I'm going to be 53. I'm 53 in December. Uh, uh, and I so mean that, says Jamie. I know how much you're helping the younger girls like me. When I, what's your, that is super cool. Thank you. And let all, your, let all your sissy friends and trans friends know about us. And like get someone to go on the show with me. So here's the other thing. Like I... People say, well, why don't you talk about this? And why don't you talk about that? Well, I can only talk about it if someone talks to me, right? So if you're willing to share, I'm willing to share it with others. You easily look 20 years younger than your age. Lucas, thank you very much. Love Brian Adams. Brian Adams wrote a song about your birth year. You know, Brian Adams was overplayed. Don't say Brian Adams to me because I can only think of two songs because they were overplayed while I was uh, uh -huh, high school. Maybe junior high. And no. Okay, guys. Uh, you know, I've talked enough. Uh, if you haven't yet, please give me the thumbs up. You know, 69 is my favorite number. Dr. Feelgood, that's great. We're only at 66 likes, so I need three more for 69, and then that's perfect, right? So, Dr. Feelgood, give me a like. Give me a like. Come on, just push it. Come on, push it. Come on. The like, the thumbs up, push it. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all right, guys. You guys are super cool. So here's the other thing. I believe that a good show and a good host is really like you, you attract people like you, right? You attract people like you. I'm December 13th, honey. So... Like, I don't have a moderator or, or whatever you call them for this chat. And so far, like, no one needed to be blocked. Why? Because you're all cool people. And probably also because, you know, you're going to be blocked. But really, like, like this group, the, this channel attracts, like, really cool people. I am not shitting you. Oh, look, it's 69 likes. As much as I also like that number, it would be better if it was higher. Um, so there you guys, so there you go. Uh, so thank you for all the compliments. I, I, I really do appreciate them. And I am not just saying it to be whatever PC and those who know me. No, I am not PC. Is that you guys, my viewers, my listeners, my followers, like you, you make it for me and you make it like totally cool and wonderful to be in a chat with other cool people. Um, so thank you for that. I, look, I didn't even need a moderator today. Love it. So we'll see you in the next one. And hopefully, I'm going to put up another episode soon. So let me tell you what it is. Uh, we were at episode 30, I believe. The next episode, next episode. So we just posted one on a couple, both of them bisexual, both of them swingers. God, they have a lot of sex. We get a bunch of bi people and all the, it's just different ways of connecting. Oh, so the next episode I am going to post is uh, publish, what they call it on YouTube, is called The Accidental Swingers. What? That's right. They accidentally fell into swinging. Can that happen? Uh, yeah. Wait until you hear their story. Like, it is, and then I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, I can see how that can happen. And then now they're like full on. Bam, swingers. So that's the next one. Mwah. I love you guys, and uh, thank you for loving me back. And I'll see you on the next one. Right. Okay. Bye-bye.